Hi, I'm Jennifer Jean. Today I'm going to be talking about Passport to Brooklyn by Enzo Surin, which was originally published in, online in Pangyrus Magazine. You can also read the poem in Enzo's fabulous debut collection, When My Body Was a Clinched Fist, published by Black Lawrence Press. I have it right here. When I first met Enzo, he was called a preacher poet by mutual friend J.D. Scrimger, and having read his work, I think that's an apt title. His poems always seem to contain a spark of divinity. At the end of this segment, I'll introduce a writing prompt so you can bring out the divine in your own poetry. You can find more videos on similarly divine and otherwise amazing poets on my Jennifer John Writer Patreon page, which is a great resource for people like you who are doing the hard work of making your poems into their best selves. Now let's take a look at Passport to Brooklyn. So a quick word before I begin to read this poem, I actually was originally going to choose one of the poems, uh, one of the many poems that use uh, the phrase clinched fist uh, from the title because I really love that image uh, that Enzo brings forward in his book. You know, a body being a clinched fist, being so, so taut and so, uh, you know, full of uh, emotion and, and passion and rage, actually. Uh, so those poems are throughout that whole collection. I wanted to choose one, but I was really drawn to this poem um, because it's a, it has a different title, so it stood out in that way, but also because it has a um, history in its publication. It was published in Pangyrus, and Pangyrus always allows poets, <laughs> I've been published there, so I know, always allows poets to include a little bit of uh, an explanation on what they changed, uh, in the poem, uh, after they submitted it, they work with you, the editors work with you on changing, or maybe give the poet uh, a moment to explain the source of the poem or what they were trying to achieve in the poem. And so Enzo has that, and I'll talk about that uh, towards the end of the video. But now for reading the poem, Passport to Brooklyn. Have you forgotten which bus takes you down Flatbush Avenue, ballpark where on Saturday afternoons a beer-bellied mechanic rounded the bases all the way home your no-hitter stashed in his pocket? Have you forgotten buying knockoffs and bootlegged mixtapes on Jamaica Avenue, nights spent crushing cardboard in the back room of a payless with the dread, late night dollar cab rides, beef patty champagne, cola on your breath, the whims and warps of New York City potholes, the flavor of quarter waters, stalled when you tried to unlearn the same strut that made Danielle want to have your baby. It kept even real thugs at bay. You have forgotten nights, riding shotgun in Sean's Piaget, daydreams of Rose's sister, two years younger, a poet who at 14 spell bound to her doorstep long after lights would bail, streets of whatever city names you no longer recognize, no matter what corner you're on, when you can't seem to find a good bodega or the way back, find the vial of scented oil in your pocket, flicking the cap's dull black enamel, the one Frankie gifted the year Wu-Tang clans protect your neck bellowed from his headphones in the back of English the year before he was stabbed to death. So apologies to Enzo and to all uh, owners of this uh, kind of car that I totally butchered. <laughs> I think I said Piaget. I don't know where I got that. Is it Poget? I should have looked that up, but I did not. So I'm giving you this apology. Okay, let's take a look at the highlighted sections. That, those are the portions I want to talk about. So uh, this poem starts off with a have you forgotten? So that's very interesting. And that forgotten uh, element repeats just one more time, but the way that he arranges the sentences uh, gets us uh, as readers to follow along what he's talking about. Oh no, here we go. Actually, two more times. I didn't highlight the second one in the second stanza. All right, so he has two have you forgotten, and then this underlined bolded section, you have forgotten. That's that's what I've heard called uh, a volta or a turn. You know, things turn in the poem itself, content-wise, and also in the way he forms the poem. And that's, interestingly enough, right in the center. He has one, two, three, four, five, six, eh, you know, six. So there's not a central uh, stanza that happens here, but it's that first line in that third, 
I'm sorry, fourth stanza. So it's in the first line in the second half of the poem. So yeah, it's a very great place to put a Volta. This is kind of a masterclass kind of poem, I would say. So it shows you how to formulate a really great poem, I would say. It's good without being predictable, especially that's a good thing. <laughs> you never want to do that um, as you're writing poetry. And as my uh, viewers and subscribers know, I like to talk about poems uh, in such a way, not just for readers to learn, but for writers to learn how to write. So, you know, readers, yeah, they get a lot out of it. You know, oh, this is interesting backstory, but writers, how to write those great poems with that kind of divine spark that I mentioned about earlier. Okay, so he has this, have you forgotten? And then he gives us all these like hyper micro details, which are amazing and very particular. And I highlighted the one, two, three, four, fifth line in the first stanza, no hitter your no hitter stashed in his pocket. I actually don't know what Enzo means. I, I know Enzo, I could ask him, <laughs> but I don't know it no hitter stashed in his pocket. It could be a metaphor actually, um, because a no hitter is uh, some kind of baseball term. Okay, so I know nothing about sports, I'm guessing. So from living on the earth for X number of years, which I'm not gonna reveal, um, I've heard that term, so I know it's some kind of baseball term, but it doesn't seem like a thing. It's it's a thing that you do, it's an action, as far as I understand. How can it go in a pocket? So it maybe it's a substitute word for a noun uh, that can of a thing that can fit into a pocket. So yeah, so that's a micro detail. I don't know what he's talking about, but because he already led, even though this is comes fifth line in for stanza, uh, he's already led with tons of micro details. I'm okay with a micro detail I don't understand. I'm all there with uh, with the speaker, especially because he says, have you. So you directed towards uh, the reader, it seems, you know, because I'm reading it. Have you, have I forgotten? Well, I never experienced this. The real you is he's talking to uh, a portion of himself, okay? That's, that's the real actual you. But as a technique employed by a writer, when you say you, the reader is drawn in. So I become like Enzo, Enzo's self, you do as well. We're all Enzo, everyone's Enzo here. Um, we've all forgotten, or actually, well, we're all being reminded because he's, he isn't saying we've forgotten. He's just asking actually, have you forgotten? We're being reminded, have you forgotten which bus, so that's a particular bus, again, with the micro details, down a particular avenue, Flatbush, um, particular ballpark, particular, well, not particular Saturday, Saturday afternoons general, but it feels particular, you know, it's a certain kind of Saturday afternoon where these kinds of things happen. Beer belly mechanic, very specific kind of person, specific job, specific look, um, did a specific thing. So again, then by that time we get to no hitter, we're fine. Okay. And I just highlighted the question mark because that's a great way to address a you, you know, asking a question. I think that that's great. And then this second, have you forgotten, which I forgot. <laughs> no pun intended, to highlight comes into play here. And he keeps on going with these um, details. I notice here he has Jamaica Ave. Uh, and I think that that was, you know, interesting that I said Avenue because he had Avenue before. I would love to ask Enzo, why'd you switch it to Ave? Maybe because how he reads it, you know, the most accurate voicing of this poem, Ave works better. I don't know, that's my guess as a writer. Uh, that's the kind of choice I would make. Okay, and then he goes down here. I actually really like this moment, beef patty champagne, because that's a gross combination, <laughs> but it's very particular. So it brings me into the moment, and he's addressing me still. This you has been said twice, so I'm being addressed, and I'm in this moment. Um, and then he goes to the flavor. Okay, the reason why I highlighted the flavor is because we've got, have you forgotten blah, 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 question mark. And then have you forgotten blah, 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 question mark, right before the, the flavor. The flavor just, this is another technique you can use. You ask a question so that you don't have to include another question. I mean, you could as a writer. I really liked his choice here. And again, as my listeners and subscribers know, I everything I'm talking about is the choices 
that are made by the writer and you know trying to figure out what would happen if they made different choices this is kind of like a life lesson thing here you know life is about choices so same thing with art all art about choices uh and of course poetry being an art about choices so he chose to not ask that question again have you forgotten he could have done that have you forgotten the flavor of quarter of orders stall could have done that but didn't i like that choice that he did not and he didn't have to end with another question which is a great lead into this bold section you have forgotten so he switches it even more and he has a transition switch with that sentence that's not a question you have forgotten it there's an assertion going on there etc more detailed details uh you know i'm trying to focus on a few things otherwise i'd go into these great details yes and he does the same kind of thing that he did with the flavor instead of saying again you have forgotten He's, I think he can do this because he put the you have forgotten the assertion right in the center. It's a great place for it. So we're not going to forget, and you know, what's going on here. You have forgotten is in the back of our minds when we read streets of, etc. Uh, when you can't seem to find, blah, 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 find. It's another thing. So you don't have to repeat those those uh, same words, you know, you got to use repetition in the best possible way. You got to be careful what you're repeating. He could have just had the whole thing is, have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? I'm glad he didn't, you know, um, that would have been predictable. Might have been alleviated again by the hyper micro detail, but maybe not. This is a better poem for having added some variety in that repetition because the you have forgotten still uses the word forgotten. So we get that. And then we get, uh, you know, to the end where we have a surprise waiting for us the year before he was stabbed to death a person here so it's like quite violent a lot going on here i say that this is um a great poem to get to know what's going on in this book also even though it doesn't have that title uh with the phrase clenched fist that he uses throughout the book still i just want to let you know you should pick up enzo's book and this is a great introduction if you love this poem which of course you do uh this is a great entry into into the entire book now before i share the writing prompt with you if you're watching this on youtube please take time now to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell below in the description section for this video, you can find links to my Patreon, Twitter, Instagram, and website. If you're watching this on Instagram, you can find links to all these things in my bio. As well, uh, I will be providing links to Enzo's book and to his, his own website. Um, all my exclusive poetry and creative community related content is available to patrons on my Patreon page, including the extended version of this video. So definitely become a subscriber there. Okay, let's get started.